Hey guys, welcome to my video about mechanical mods and sub-ohm vaping. So first things first, what is a mechanical mod? Well, a mechanical mod is basically an e-cigarette mod that has no built-in electronic circuitry. And so uh, basically think of it kind of like a flashlight. And if you open up the uh, tube, you basically got a switch a negative post and a positive post, one at each end. And uh, you've got your 510 connection there, but you don't have anything inside of it that's electronic. And a lot of them don't even have any uh, any electronic wires. They just uh, work by making contact, mechanical contact. And uh, one of the advantages of a mechanical mod is actually that there's very little to go wrong inside of the mechanical mod if you're using it properly. Uh, but one thing about mechanical mods is there is no safety protection inside of them. So uh, basically, you're going to have to really take into account some of the things, uh, some important safety points that I'll cover in a little bit. Uh, so how does a mechanical mod work? Well, like I said, you've got the switch at the bottom, you've got a positive and you've got a negative post. And when you push this switch, it pushes against the battery, and that is making contact with the post at the top, the positive, and that makes contact with your uh, with your atomizer, and then you get vapor. So let me just get my battery put in here, and I'll cover some of the things I want to talk about about safety and mechanical mods, and also cover a little bit of the basic principles behind mechanical mods and sub ohm vaping. So one thing that I really want to cover today is battery safety. When you're using a mechanical mod, it's very important that you take into account battery safety. So uh, when you're using a uh, any kind of mechanical mod, you need to make sure that you have the right type of battery. Uh, basically, not all batteries are created equal. Um, every battery has what is called a continuous amp discharge or current discharge rate, and that's in amps. Um, so uh, Basically, I've got here with me an AW IMR, uh, I believe it's 2000 milliamp hour battery, and this is a 10 amp battery. However, the battery that I have in here, a Sony, uh, a Sony uh, VTC4, is rated at 30 amps. So uh, I'm going to cover that in a little bit. Um, but basically, you need to know what the uh, the current discharge, continuous current discharge rating of your battery is, especially if you're using it for sub-ohm vaping. Uh, so, how do you figure out how many amps are going to be used by a coil that you're using? Well, you can go to an online uh, an online uh, Ohm's law calculator, and this is a very important thing. You're going to need to get familiar with Ohm's law uh, when you're vaping on a mechanical mod. So, uh, like the one below here, this is one that I use, uh, you're going to uh, find that you're going to be able to calculate with voltage and with your resistance what your current or amperage is going to be, uh, that's going to be drawn out of the battery when you're using your mechanical mod. So, just as an example, uh, when you fully charge a battery, I know it says 3.7 volts on the battery, but this this is your nominal uh, voltage output. But actually, when you're using a me mechanical mod, uh, when you first charge the battery, you're actually going to be getting 4.2 volts. So when you're calculating with Ohm's law to uh, get your current, uh, you are going to want to put in 4.2 volts just to be safe, even if it's not fresh off of the charger. and uh, you're, you're putting out a lower voltage, you're not going to want to calculate it with that because you want to make sure, make absolutely sure that your battery is safe for the application that you're using it for. So 4.2 volts is what you should be calculating with. So for example, if you have a 1.5 ohm single coil atomizer, you're going to have a current draw of around 2.8 amps at that 4.2 volts. I know this may sound a bit confusing, but it is something you're going to have to get familiar with if uh, 
if you're going to be building your own coils and you're going to be vaping on a mechanical mod just for safety's sake. Uh, and with that uh, 1.5 ohm uh, atomizer, you are going to also be drawing about 11.76 watts of power. So that's that's quite a safe setup for most batteries. Like with a 10 amp battery, you're going to be well within the safe limit. But as another example, when you get into sub-ohm territory, say that you're uh, building a 0.3 ohm coil. So I've done some calculations. A 0.3 ohm coil is going to be drawing 14 amps. And that's 4 amps more than this 10 amp battery can handle. So, in that case, you're going to need a 20 or a 30 amp battery to safely vape at that level. Um, so, like I said before, I have a Sony VTC4 battery which is rated at 30 amps, and there are a bunch of other batteries that you can get 20 amps, 25, 22, a bunch of different uh, ratings, but you're going to want to make sure that you're well within the safe limit. And also, one of the rules that I like to follow is if you're going to be vaping on something, you want to be only using 75% of the battery's capacity, 75% percent of the current draw that you would be using just to give a buffer zone. So uh, keep that in mind. So why do we have to keep in mind this uh, continuous current discharge rating of the battery? Well, if you use a battery that's rated too low for the application that you're, uh, that you're using it for, you can actually cause the battery to vent. You can cause the battery to vent or explode, get very hot, and none of this is very good. Um, it's quite dangerous, and so you want to keep that that uh, that buffer zone between your battery's maximum for uh, for what you're uh, you're going to be vaping on. Another thing in regards to battery safety is uh, if you are building your uh, your own coils on an RBA or an RDA, uh, you're going to want to keep uh, in mind checking your atomizer before you use it with an ohm checker. I've got one right here. Let me just get it out. There it is. So you're going to want to get yourself a uh, little ohm checker. They're, they're not too expensive. And you're going to want to test your atomizers before you put them on just to make sure that you don't have any short circuits and you don't have an atomizer that's way too low for what you're using. So get yourself a little ohm checker like this and basically if you build a coil and you put it on here and it reads one or it gets a uh, a reading that's kind of bouncing all over the place you've got a problem and you're gonna have to sort that out before you start vaping on it because that could uh, be a short circuit and uh, like I said before, that can be quite dangerous. So, what are sub ohm coils, and why would someone vape sub ohm? Well, uh, a sub ohm coil is basically an atomizer coil that is below one ohm uh, in resistance. So, uh, like I mentioned before, these builds will typically draw, well, will draw a significantly higher current. Uh, than a, a typical atomizer above one ohm. Uh, it'll also run at a higher wattage. So uh, that's one of the advantages of a mechanical mod is you can vape at much higher wattages without a safety circuit cutting you off, but you need to have the right battery. So what's the point in vaping sub-ohm? Well, a lot of people vape sub-ohm to get a bigger amount of vapor, more flavor, more uh, warmth to the vapor. Um, it's not necessary, but it can be an interesting thing to delve into if you know your, th uh, your, uh, your stuff. So a big question that a lot of people seem to, to have is, are mechanical mods safe? Well, the answer is, when you use them correctly and with the proper high drain batteries, a properly uh, built and checked atomizer, uh, yes, they are quite safe. Uh, the failures that generally occur, uh, they're w with people who don't know their basic electric, uh, electrical principles and uh, don't have 
the uh, the proper equipment to run the atomizers that they have built on their mechanical mod. So I'm just going to cover a few of the must-haves I mentioned in the videos for uh, if you're starting out on a mechanical mod. Um, a few things that you're going to definitely need to have are a ohm checker like the one that I showed you here, an ohm's law calculator that you can find on the internet, and uh, also, like I mentioned many times, a safe high drain battery with a high current limit. So just in conclusion, if you're planning on getting a mechanical mod, just make sure you know your battery safety, your basic electrical principles like Ohm's law, and if you want to get into sub-ohm, start slow. Don't, don't build something like 0.3 ohms to start out with. Um, make sure you practice your, uh, your building uh, if you're building on RBAs or RDAs, make sure that you practice it on something that, that maybe has protection like this, build it above one ohm, and kind of work your way down. Um, and uh, just always keep in mind ohm's law and your battery safety, uh, your battery's limit, etc. Um, and just remember, you don't have to get into mechanical mods and sub-ohm vaping. It's a thing that some people do, but it's not necessary. Whatever keeps you off of cigarettes and keeps you vaping, that's all that matters. See you next time.